Well, hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about moisturizers with sunscreen. Are they effective or do we need a dedicated true sunscreen on over them when we're using moisturizers with SPF? Are they enough or are they, are they just a gimmick? Moisturizers with sunscreen are in fact effective at protecting your skin against the damaging effects of not only UVB, the rays of ultraviolet radiation that cause a sunburn and destroy the cellular DNA, but also UVA, those rays that penetrate really deeply and chew up your collagen, suppress your immune system. This has actually been shown in studies that moisturizers with SPF do exactly that. Same thing that dedicated sunscreens do, moisturizers with SPF can do as well. However, other studies have shown that unfortunately, users of moisturizers with SPF do not apply enough to actually get protection of their skin. This was done in comparison to actual dedicated sunscreens and people are a little bit better at getting consistent application of sunscreen if it's a true sunscreen versus a moisturizer with SPF. Both products, however, if applied correctly, can protect you from a burn. What mistakes did users in the study make in terms of applying sunscreen? They didn't apply sunscreen to areas of the face that are really at high risk for skin cancers, specifically around the eyes. Users of moisturizers with SPF underapplied sunscreen to the eyelids and they didn't apply enough total sunscreen to their entire face to actually get good protection. Sunscreen needs to be applied at a concentration of two milligrams per centimeter square of surface area. And I'll get into a little bit more about the volume in a moment, but suffice it to say that people just didn't apply enough volume to really get good coverage and they missed many areas. And the investigators in this study actually questioned the participants to see if they felt confident that they had applied enough and participants felt super confident that they had a good protective layer of sunscreen on, whether they were using moisturizers with SPF or, or true sunscreens that are just sunscreens and not moisturizers. But in reality, they grossly underapplied the moisturizer with SPF in comparison to the sunscreen, and they missed a lot of really important areas. What this study tells us is that moisturizers with sunscreen can actually be very dangerous because the participants in the study believed that they had applied enough sunscreen or enough moisturizer with sunscreen to to protect their skin, when in reality they had many skip areas and had missed areas that are really important, such as around the eyelids. The reason this is potentially dangerous is that if you believe that your skin is safe and protected, you are more likely to spend more time outdoors and get even more sun exposure that can um, cause damage and set you up for skin cancer risk down the road. Taking a step back, we already know, and this study showed it as well, that regardless of if it's a moisturizer with SPF or a just plain sunscreen, people miss these areas all the time and people tend to under apply. And a danger of sunscreen in general is the same. People will be misled to believe that they can stay outdoors longer because their skin is safe. Um, but there are a lot of areas that are missed and not enough is applied the product's not reapplied, and people spend too much time outdoors. The take home point is that in order for sunscreen to be effective, not only do you have to apply enough, but you have to make sure that you apply it to all sun exposed areas on the head and neck or the rest of the body. But in this study, they were just looking at the head and neck. Don't forget your eyelids. Skin cancers on the eyelids are, and around the eyes are very, very common. One type of skin cancer, basal cell carcinoma, commonly occurs in what's called the medial canthus, the area of the eye, basically right in this area, very common location, and that location has a much poorer prognosis. So don't forget to put your sunscreen there, and also don't forget your sunglasses. Which brings me to my next point. Sunscreen alone is not enough. You can't just put sunscreen on and be you know, under the impression that you're safe. You do still need to be wearing 
sun protective clothing, a hat, sunglasses, long sleeves, and things to protect the body. And you also have to be aware of the amount of time you are spending outdoors. Studies have shown in the absence of redness or a sunburn, markers of skin damage are still activated with UV exposure, excessive UV exposure. Specifically, UVA, those rays that penetrate really deeply, can upregulate enzymes that chew up your collagen even when you don't have a sunburn. I wanna emphasize this point for those of you with medium to deep skin tones as well because you can stay outside longer without your skin burning as opposed to somebody who has pale skin, but just because you don't have a burn does not mean you are not getting that skin damage. That is a public health message that is not conveyed enough to people with medium to deep skin tones is that even though you don't burn readily, there is still damage occurring with excessive sun exposure and that's why it's really important to protect your skin from the sun regardless of the color of your skin. Everyone needs to be doing it. Speaking of deeper skin tones, one interesting observation from the study looking at how people applied sunscreens versus moisturizers with sunscreens, people with deeper skin tones tended to be better at not having skip areas. Maybe that's because, you know, it, the products are more obvious on your skin and you can see more readily that you're missing areas as opposed to if your skin is paler and it blends in to your skin tone very quickly. What are some reasons to explain the discrepancy between skip areas and under application between moisturizers with SPF and sunscreens? The first and obvious is volume, not applying enough. In order to achieve the SPF, you need to apply sunscreen at a density of two milligrams per centimeter square surface area. That's really hard to, to approximate, but it's generally about half a teaspoon to a teaspoon for your face, neck, everywhere that's sun exposed basically from the neck up. Uh, half a teaspoon to a teaspoon should be enough. And most people are not applying that much moisturizer. The other thing though that the study pointed out is there are a lot of differences in the rheology um, of, the, of sunscreens versus moisturizers. Rheology reflects things like viscoelastic properties and spread, and this plays a huge role. Differences in the viscoelastic properties and spread of a product affect how well the product is applied and the volume used. The other possible explanation is merely cognitive. You know, people tend to maybe be more thorough if they're applying sunscreen with the aim of being outdoors. Maybe they're a little bit more thorough than if they're applying a moisturizer. Maybe they're more careless because they're, you know, putting it on and, and they're not really thinking this is, this is being put on for the purposes of protecting my skin from the sun. They're putting it on like, for the moisturizing benefits. So perhaps it is really just how people think about the products. The other is the packaging, the presentation. Um, maybe in many cases, moisturizers with SPF, the SPF is not really as emphasized in the marketing and the product, and people may not really be aware that that is what the product can also do for them. And then let's face it, a lot of moisturizers with SPF are in small, packaging, tiny bottles. But at the end of the day, a product that is a moisturizer with SPF, if applied correctly with no skip areas, can protect your skin from the sun, the same as a sunscreen can. Most sunscreens are in a vehicle like a lotion or a cream that is moisturizing. However, a lot of them may lack some of the components of a moisturizer to give you kind of the full benefit of it using a moisturizer. There are three components to a moisturizer. Emollients, which smooth down the skin cell edges. There are occlusives, which lock in hydration, and there are humectants, which help hold on water into the skin. And a lot of times, sunscreens, they will have an occlusive, but no humectant, and they'll be emollient, but really they, they lack that humectant, so people aren't really getting that hydrating effect. But that's not the case for all of them, but I would say more often than not, if you pick up a product that is a moisturizer with sunscreen, it's gonna have all of those uh, moisturizing ingredients. So you will 
appreciate improvement in skin hydration and derive the moisturizing benefits. That's not to say that a product that just says sunscreen cannot act as a moisturizer, but there may be some subtle differences. So that that's kind of where moisturizers are a little different or can be a little different. How much sunscreen or moisturizer with sunscreen should you be using? And you know, generally speaking, it's anywhere from half a teaspoon to a teaspoon to cover the to cover from the neck up. But a lot of that is there's going to be some variability in that depending on the viscoelastic properties of the vehicle. It's not that that repeatable, that volume. And you're like, okay, great. <laughs> Should I weigh it out? No. Um, taking a step back, it's really the amount of time that you take and spend putting the product on that gets you the best coverage. There is a study showing this that the more, the more minutes that were dedicated to applying sunscreen, the better the application. You're more cognizant of areas that you've missed, you're taking your time. So rather than getting hung up on the volume amount, because there can be a lot of variability from vehicle to vehicle, moisturizer versus sunscreen, a lot of variability in the viscoelastic properties and the spread of the product that are going to translate into differences in volume. Rather than getting hung up on that, it's more important that you take a good amount of time to apply the sunscreen and have some awareness that you are putting it on to all surfaces, including around the eyes, the sides of the face, really a common area that people miss, um, the ears, the neck, the upper lip, uh, the lips. <laughs> yeah, make sure you cover all areas. All right, so I'm gonna end this video with a product recommendation. This is a moisturizer with SPF that I swear by. It is a favorite of mine. It's Dermatology um, SPF 46 uh, Tinted Moisturizer, their universal tint. I have gone through bottles and bottles and bottles of this, and it's one of my favorite sunscreens on moisturizer with sunscreen. It's tinted. love the tint on this. I think it really bodes well for medium, especially to deeper skin tones and not leaving a cast. Now, if you have a really deep skin tone, this may have a little bit of that violet purplish hue to it. It does have an odd odor, I will say that. It smells kind of like a pool float, but that fades right away. This brand is cruelty free. This product is fragrance free and it's a really nice moisturizer. It has glycerin in it. It also has niacinamide, which is anti-inflammatory. Um, and it's got, it's, it's really oily skin friendly too. It has uh, silicones, which are much more lightweight than a lot of other uh, occlusives and emollients. So it's very oily skin friendly. Um, this is a great moisturizer to use every day that has a very good SPF in it. And if used correctly and applied to all surface areas, works perfectly to protect your skin against UVB and UVA. So long as you don't stay outside too long and you lean on other sun protective measures as well, like wearing a hat when you're outside and your sunglasses. So yeah, that is a little bit about the dealio with sunscreens and moisturizers with SPF, how they differ. It's mostly a behavioral difference and it can be a cost difference. This particular product is like 20 to 24 bucks, I wanna say, which is not too bad in my opinion. 
Um, but a lot of moisturizers with SPF will come in a little tiny bottle and people just are not gonna apply that much of that because it's too expensive. Um, so I hope this video was helpful to you guys and if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.